Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you again today for another watercolor journal idea day. I am going to be doing some primitive folk art. Um, I haven't done that in a while and it just seems like the right kind of day to do it. So uh, basically I'm going to use some very basic big shapes to create a landscape. Uh, I'm going to put a big um, Part of my style is a big sun or moon in the background and I'm going to add some I'm actually going to add some trees to this one but we're going to draw it out so I'm just going to start with a couple of really big hills these really rounded kind of hills so one two and you can see I did tape out my um, outline of in my journal um, that'll just give me clean lines at the end um, okay, let's see. I'm actually going to put, I think, another one like down here. There we go. Uh, just gives it a little more depth. Let's put in our rising sun or moon. I think it'll be a sun. This is going to be a daytime one there. So I always use a tape roll usually for that circle. And then I'm going to keep this really simple and I'm actually going to put in some upside down. I'm going to see how this looks. So they look like upside down hills right now, but I'm going to end up putting in bleed proof white, I think some branches throughout them. So it looks like trees. So I'll just draw those in. Hmm, I'm wondering how this will come out. Or if I have to make them less rounded. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna make it just more kind of one shape versus lots of little ones that will put branches in. So more of just a wavy organic shape here. All right, that looks fine. And hopefully the way I paint it and the colors I choose will make it look like an overhang of trees. Sorry for touching the camera. An overhang of trees that we're looking through. Okay, so let's stop there with the drawing and we will add in more details later if we feel like we need them. So I'm gonna get out my paint. I have core paints, I have water brushes, paper towels. So these are my, this is my palette of core watercolor paints. That's just my preferred um, brand right now. And I'm also going to rearrange a little bit so you can see more of my palette and I will let you know what brushes I'm using. All right, there we go. You should be able to see a little better a bunch of my palette over here as well as the full um, page of the sketchbook, the journal. Okay, so I'm using a size 10 Princeton's uh, Velvet Touch brush today. I've been using this brush a lot. We are gonna start with our sky. And actually, before I even do that, my sun here, I am going to lighten the outline on this by a lot. I want this to be the absolute lightest. You can lighten the outline on the whole thing. I'm using a kneaded eraser. There's a link to these in the description. If you're not sure where to get them, you can get them online, any art store. But these are great because they don't leave all the little crumbs behind. All right, so I'm gonna start with cobalt teal. Oh, and I have a little brush strand in there. Okay, cobalt teal. There we go. And I'm gonna put add quite a bit of water to it. I want it to be nice and light. Maybe a little bit more. And you can always swatch out your colors before you put them on your page. I have this swatch card kind of started. So it's going to be a really light teal color. And that is what we're going to paint the sky. 
and I'm not going to worry too much about the edges of the green here or I'm sorry the edges of the tree which will be green later what I am going to worry about are the edges of the sun And I'm basically just filling in the relatively flat wash, not worrying too much about. Um, any type of gradient or leaving any clouds or highlights or anything like that. We're just going to get this. If you plop in a little more color here and there, it's totally fine. I mean, you can paint your sky however you want, but that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm worrying more about the outline of the sun because I know that is going to be a very light color. And it's definitely easier to do washes like this with light colors versus really dark colors. Dark colors you may have to do more than one um, layer to avoid streakiness, especially if you're doing it not, you know, inside a shape and it takes you a little extra time to kind of get around the edges of the shape and to build up saturation. All right, so that is our sky. So we're gonna leave that as it is. These I've already decided are going to be green. Um, and they are going to have some yellow in them at the edges. They're going to be really dark at top and get lighter towards the bottom. Um, I do have to wait for this to dry though. I'm thinking about my hills though now and what color I want to paint the hills. So this is going to be like my green. Definitely use this lighter yellow green and then we'll also add phthalo to it to make it dark. So we'll do, so I'm preparing colors that I'm not even going to use right now, <laughs> but these are kind of the three greens. You could always add some Payne's gray to, to desaturate a little bit, make it even darker, um, that I'm going to use for the trees. But again, we're not even there yet. Cause I got to let this edge dry, but I could start to put this in, um, this bottom hill and should all these be basically the same color with slight value changes, um, so sometimes what I like to do when I'm not sure is I already have my blue on there is basically swatch out my color palette. So this will be the lighter yellow and this will be the darker green. So this is basically my color palette. These nice, all these cool colors. I am definitely going to add yellow in for the sun, like a yellow, yellow a warm yellow and probably a bright yellow as well. So this is our color palette right now. So those hills, do we pick something like a really cool purpley color that might complement the yellows really nicely? Um, do we pick something that's kind of within this color palette, similar to the tree? Um, and maybe we do that. Mm. I'm just feeling like it might look a little flat. Oh, big choices, big choices. Um, or do we go completely off the rails and pick something totally wild, which I don't think I'm going to do. I'm just looking at my color palette right now to kind of decide, you know, do I introduce a super bright color or do I keep the color palette soft? I think magenta is and anything in the red or magenta family is out of the question. But I just wanted to put it on there to see. You know, I kind of like this idea of this like purple color. This is an ultramarine and di and magenta mixture. Or is this just dioxazine purple? Um, no, it definitely has ultramarine in it. Um, so let's do something purple, but I want it to be more more of a gray purple. And that will complement, I think, the yellow really well. All right, I'm going to add some magenta to this. 
blue, magenta. So I'm basically making my own purple, but I want it to be more on the blue side. I'm gonna add a little Payne's gray to gray it out. Okay. Whoops. So this is a little more gray blue than that. That one's a little warmer, but I think, I think this is, I think this will work with this palette. Okay. So I am going to paint this little hill down here, the darkest. So I put in a nice dark swatch of color right at the bottom. And as we go up the hill, it's going to get a little lighter. So I rinsed off my brush completely and just basically applied water to the top and invited in some of that darker color. And it's a really tiny hill, so we don't have a lot of runway here. So I'm gonna let that dry and we'll see how it goes. I might have to lift some color out. There's so much paint in there right now. So my brush is completely dry right now. I'm just pulling out some of that paint. Okay, we're gonna just have to let that dry and trust the process. So this is dry enough to get started. So let's get started with the tree and then we'll bounce back to these folks down here, these other hills. All right, so we're using um, a green gold and I'm gonna water that down a little bit more because basically the sun is rising and casting light. So I wanna Sorry, just cut off mid-sentence there. I want to make that apparent with the objects within this scene is that the sun is casting light on them. So this looks very yellow. It's a green gold. And I painted the whole thing because I'm going to progressively get darker. All right, so let's pull in some sap green. But I, oh, and you can see this was not completely dry right there. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to hit it with a dryer and we'll come right back. All right, we're back now. If I had done this and was patient and dried this before I added the green gold color, uh, I wouldn't have dried it before adding another layer of green. I would have done all of that wet on wet, but such is life. So what I'm gonna do is actually, what am I gonna do? I am going to wet this section again with just some water because I want my green to flow into this yellow area a little effortlessly without a lot of my help. All right, so sap green. We're gonna go from the top here. I'm gonna kind of mimic the shape down below. Core paints travel really well, um, especially on good cotton paper with lots of paint and water. Uh, oh yes, all right, so I'm making this darker green and I am gonna drop in this darker green up top. And we are gonna just blend this out a bit. But I wanna preserve some of the lightness on the edges. So you may have to lift out a little color. Don't forget while you're lifting, wipe your brush off. A lot of people forget that and then they just, some of the color they lifted off one spot, they introduce to another. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. That looks fun. Let's move over to our sun here and then we can probably jump to this hill and then this hill last and add on some fun details with some darker colors or some bleed proof white. 
Alrighty, so the sun. We're going to start with a light yellow, and I'm actually going to have it lightest in the middle. Just going to paint a nice light yellow here. And then we're going to kind of move away from the center. And we're going to add even darker yellow on the edges. As you can see, my core paint is getting frisky. It's moving so much on this super wet surface. Look at all these little tendrils and spirals. They're kind of cool, but not the look I was going for. So that's okay. I'm gonna dry my brush off. So I got, it's nice and clean, swirled it in water. And I am just going to help this move more in a fashion that I was hoping for smoothing some of those areas out, lifting off some of the color in the middle. There we go. Okay. I went outside my outline a little bit up here. So we're getting a little bit of the blue overlapping with the yellow. So we darker edge, but that's okay. It kind of works. It kind of works. All right. So let's move back to our purples. We're going to do this one over here while this one dries. And this will even look, it looks nice and bright right now, but when you put a dark color against it, it's going to look even darker. So, all right, our hills, we're going to start with the dark color along the edges. especially since yellow and purples are complementary colors, kind of when they're next to each other, they, they complement each other. They make each other pop even a little bit more. So now I just have a clean brush with water. Just working my way up here. And I am going to introduce some darker color. down below. Oh, that might have been too dark. Yeah, no, it's going to be good as it dries. And just work this up. So these are gradient washes. Where we're going from darker to lighter. All right, so I'm going to have to hit this with um, my heat tool again just to get this dry so we can keep moving. You can be patient. Let yours dry naturally. If you have a heat tool, great. Go for it. I would let anything that's wet on wet dry for maybe a minute or two before you hit it with heat just so that it has a chance to continue spreading naturally and softly. All right, this is still a little damp down there, but that's fine. It's out of my way for what we're going to do here on this edge. just iron out this edge a little bit. There we go. And 
in these dark colors they always go on super dark and then as they dry they get lighter I may even add another layer over here just to help with that transition a little bit more there we go all right let's do another layer over here Yeah, I'm glad I chose this purple. I think it works. Kind of a little bit muted. It's not overpowering. A little more on the neutral side with this kind of gray undertone. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna let this all dry. We're gonna come back in and add some details uh, with a smaller brush in some darker colors, as well as some bleed proof white to make this really pop. Alrighty, everything is dry. I'm back with a size four and a liner brush. I have my bleed proof white here, if I can get it open. Oh, cause I always end up uh, putting a dirty cap back on. And you know what my, my fix for that is? I literally just dip the top in some water and it kind of loosens up the crust around the top. There we go. Yeah, because I leave the top dirty and then it dries around the, don't do that. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I'm just cleaning off the grooves. Okay, bleed proof white. I think I'm gonna do actually the branches up above in a darker color. I'm gonna bring in a really dark brown. Nope, that's not a dark brown. Actually, I can make dark brown. I'm going to take this dark green and I'm just going to add magenta to it. And I have a super, it looks black, but it definitely has some brown tones. You can add a little more magenta if you want it to be, you could pop in a little yellow if you want it to be more of an orangey or brown color, but I want a really dark brown. I'm going to take my size four brush and I think I, we're going to see how this goes. We're going to experiment together. I'm going to pull some branches through the trees here. You could definitely do this with the liner brush too if you don't have a brush with a good tip. Or just aren't as confident in your brush technique yet. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we're going to kind of leave it. And we'll revisit it maybe with some other details in a minute. Okay, let's go down to the bottom. Let's add some bleed proof white. We're going to do bleed proof white and some dark, dark purple and blues. Down here, we're just gonna add some leaves. These are always fun. It's always fun to add this white onto a really dark saturated color. The contrast immediately makes things look so fanciful and fun. You can kind of do whatever shapes or designs you want. You can do all leaves, you could do grasses. Add a little water to this. Big leaves, little leaves.
And this part can be really meditative. So take your time, kind of find your way through. I am gonna add in a few darker things as well. So add in just a few more. Let's pick up some Payne's Gray and Dioxazine Purple. Super, super dark purple. Now I don't wanna work completely over. You can cross over some of the white, but I actually probably should have put it on the darker colors first and then put the white on, but that's okay. Just gonna make it work. Kind of using the same patterns, the same leaf shapes. Maybe we'll do some smaller kind of do 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 little pouncy. Flowers and like uh And you can tell how meditative this can be because I'm not talking very much. <laughs> I'm quiet. All right, that is fun. Let's revisit the top again. I think I'm gonna add, I'm gonna take just some Payne's Gray and some Thalo Blue. Nope, not Payne's Gray, Thalo Blue and Sap Green. And I think on some of these, I'm just gonna add in some cute little leaf shapes. Not a lot, just a few to kind of like incorporate these branches just a little bit better. I'm also gonna try not to run my hand through what I just painted below. in the different areas around the branches. And actually, I think I'm gonna add more of a yellow tone, some of this green gold here that's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna use down below on these lighter areas. Like that. Yeah, I think this definitely kind of ties things together a little bit more. The whole thing doesn't have to be made of these types of leaves, but you certainly could if you wanted to individually go through um, and make like a pattern of leaves. Oh my gosh, that would be so fun. But I like this way too, nice and simple. All right, I feel like we need something in this sky area, but I'm just not sure what. Maybe I can add kind of a tree shape back here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna stick with purple. I'm gonna use a light purple, watered down. And I'm just gonna put in like a couple of little conical shaped trees like this. Not really conical, um, like upside down teardrop shape, really long teardrops. Do one more. And then I'm gonna take this darker color, 
drop it in on the side. So the side facing the sun. Yeah, that fills it out a little bit better. I mean, I guess there's a lot of purple going on now, but that's okay. Maybe I could throw in or could have thrown in like a green one to kind of tie the top together. And then let's do, so just using purple, just more purple. Um, I'm going to put in kind of a shadow going off this way. Perfect. That was fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. You can definitely do lots of different versions of this same painting, just kind of combining the different elements and making it work. I do like the color choices we used. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video with someone who you think might like it as well. Uh, go ahead and check out the description for links to supplies and materials, and I will catch you for our next video shortly. Thanks, y'all. Take care.